Huh? <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen, do you? You just got to be flexible. That's, 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 that's good. That's great. <laughs> We're so glad to have every one of you here this morning as uh, we come together as a family. I want to thank all of you for being here this morning. Uh, we want to encourage uh, everyone, if you would, both our members and our guests, if you would, we have these programs that we would like for everyone, these bulletins, we would like for every person to have a bulletin in your hand, because I'm going to ask you to do something with the card in just a minute. If you didn't get one when you came in, would you raise your hand? we got some guys that will get you one. Just raise your hand, we'll get you a, a bulletin. Looks like everybody got a bulletin. we got a couple over here. Thank you. These, I just want to talk for a second about these cards and just how precious they are. Uh, during our service, anytime you feel the urge to, to write something on this card, feel free. Maybe it's a prayer request. Maybe it's a praise to God. At the end of our service, we're going to have you pass these cards in, and our ushers are going to pick these cards up. Let me just say, tell you how they bless me personally. Uh, I try to email every person who puts a prayer request down on these cards. And it's such an honor for me to pray over you. We also have a prayer team that does the very same thing. So whether it's a praise or whether it's your prayer request, we hope that you believe in the power of prayer and you will feel moved this morning to write down anything that's on your heart this morning so that when you pass these in, we can pray, pray over that if we can. I want to tell you also, we're excited this morning because we have a couple of families that are coming to say they want to join in our journey to make disciples here at the Shannon Oaks Church. And these two families are coming to join with us. I'd like to introduce them at this time. And if you would, I'm going to have them stand up. Hold your applause till I tell you guys a little bit about the families. First of all, I'd like to ask Scott and Liz and Holden Moss to stand up. Would you all stand up? Let me tell you about the Mosses. Scott is the uh, captain of the Cedar Hill Fire Department. What a responsibility that is. Liz is a teacher, English teacher at our high school, and Holden is a sophomore at our high school. And we are thrilled to have the Mosses. Let's give them a, a round of applause. We're so excited to have you guys. They are awesome people. Uh, my wife and I have known them a long time, and we're so blessed to have them. Also, we want to welcome this morning Randy and Dana Harp. Would you all stand? They're right back here. Would you all stand? Randy is the, the Dean of the College of Agriculture and Science and Natural Resources at AM Commerce. And Dana teaches science. She's with me at the middle school, and she teaches science. Let's give them a big hand. We're so glad to have them. It is, it is so, such a blessing just to be a part of a spiritual family and have others who say, you know, we want to be a part of that too. We want to serve and use our, our talents and our abilities here. And let me just say what's really on my heart. I mean, this is so much on my heart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm off script this morning. I'm sorry. But if you're here at this place and you feel like you have a gift or a talent that God's calling you to use in this place and it's not happening, Please, on your card this morning, say, Jeff, would you, would you contact me? I've got something I want to do here at Shen Oaks. God has laid something on my heart because God's calling you to do that. We want to help you do that, provide ways for you to do that. So please, this morning, would you put that on your card if God's calling you to do that? Secondly, I want to say this. We want to connect with you. And if for some reason or another, you're not in one of our small groups. We call them life groups. Sometimes they meet every Sunday night. The group I'm in, we meet every other Sunday night. We, would, we, we just would love to have you in a small group so we can get to know you better and we can be blessed by our relationship with you. If you would like to be in a life group and you're not, would you put that on your card this morning as well? And then we will contact you and we'll make that happen. God just really has, has put these, these things on my heart this morning that I wanted to share with you. Well, we've been in a study called Know Him. And the idea is, 
if we can know God more intimately, we can love him more deeply. And so what we've been trying to do is God has given us some gifts. I mean, true gifts in his word. That we might know him and have a closer relationship with him. He's given us his names. Two weeks ago, we started with the name Elohim, creator. And you saw in your bulletin this morning, you have a card like this. And so what we did that whole week, we lived out the decision that we would praise Elohim for all he has created. And seven days, we just praised him. Seven days, we just praised him. And we grew in our love for God. And then last week, we learned about Yahweh, the uncaused, all-promising God who is a promise-keeping, over 8,000 promises he's given us in his word, and he's kept every one. And all last week on our decision card, as we went throughout our week, we praised him for those promises. This morning, we come to a third name. It's the name El Elyon, God Most High. And this morning, we're going to dig into that name. But before we do, we're going to continue our very positive ritual of reciting our theme verse for this series. So would you stand with me and let's say this together. Most of you won't even have to look at the screen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Say it with me. The righteous run to it and are safe. It's Proverbs 18.10. Say it one more time. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Well, the name we're going to run to this morning is El Elyon. El Elyon. And before we dig into that, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this morning. God, the worship has been amazing. Your grace is amazing. God, we thank you for bringing us the Moss family and the Hart family. May we be good shepherds of their talents and their abilities and their skills. May we love them and support them in their service and their work here at Shannon Oaks. God, I just pray this morning as we share this very powerful name of yours, that you would open our hearts, open our minds. May we leave this place different than we came. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Has anybody ever had to set you in your place? Mark Twain was at a dinner in Boston with some very powerful, wealthy, influential people. And this dude he was sitting next to was just bragging for the whole lunch hour about all that he'd acquired, all that he'd accomplished, and all he was going to do. He said, one day, I'm going to travel to the Holy Lands. I'm going to climb Mount Zion. Mount Sinai, excuse me. And when I get to the top, I'm going to proclaim the Ten Commandments. Twain paused for a moment and he said, why don't you just stay here in Boston and keep them? I love the story of, of a Navy transcription of it that was intersected of these Navy and Canadian military units. This comes from Naval Operations, October 10th, 1995, radio conversation begins from the Americans. Please divert your course 15 degrees to the north to avoid a collision. The Canadians reply, we recommend you divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. The Americans came back. 
This is the captain of a United States naval ship. I say again, divert your course. Canadians came back. No. I say again, you divert your course. Oh, man. The Americans came back. This is the aircraft carrier USS Lincoln, the second largest ship in the United States Atlantic Fleet. We are accompanied by three destroyers, three cruisers, and numerous support vessels. I demand you change your course 15 degrees north. That's one, five degrees north. Our countermeasures will be undertaken to ensure the safety of this ship. The Canadians replied, we are a lighthouse. It's your call. I think all of us from time to time have been set in our place. And this morning, we're going to talk about what it means to know our proper place. And the way we know our proper place is to figure out where the proper place for God is. This morning, we're going to look at the name El Elyon. Yahweh is our ultimate God. But pagans, back in biblical times, would take their gods and they would try and place them on the highest hill, the highest mountain. And they would proclaim to everyone around, our God is up at the highest top. Our God is the highest point. Hebrews would simply respond, we serve El Elyon, God Most High. Church, over the next 12 weeks, we're going to study lots of names of God. But I want to tell you this, this name is the one that's most desired by Satan of all the names. There's a text in Isaiah that purportedly talks about the fall of Satan. It's in Isaiah 14, and I'm going to read to you 12 and 13, and I'm going to show you verse 14. Listen to 12 and 13. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, and here comes Satan, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Zephon. And then comes this next verse. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like El Elyon. This is what Satan lusts for. We're going to talk about lots of names of God. We're going to talk about God being a shepherd, being a healer, being a comforter, being a provider. Satan didn't want any of those. This is the one he wants, El Elyon. So when the demons are confronted by Jesus in Mark chapter 5, it's not surprising the conversation we have. You have this gathering demoniac confronted by Jesus. His name is Legion. And what does he say when he meets Jesus? He shouts at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? So here's the question as we get into this morning. The forces of darkness recognize Yahweh as God Most High. Do we? Do we? And that's what we're going to dig into this morning. So this morning what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you a story of Abraham, and then I'm going to show you some verses from from Genesis 14 from the story. And it's really really an amazing story. And I I thought what I'd do this morning, if it's okay with you, to make it simple, kind of what I do with my students, I'm going to kind of give you a a Texas uh, analogy to help you understand the story. Okay? So there's these five kings in Genesis 14, and they've been paying basically protection money to this one big king. They've been doing it for like 12 years, and they're sick of it. 
So they're not going to pay protection money anymore. So let's just say the five kings are over five cities, over Dallas and Fort Worth, over San Antonio and Houston. And we'll say Austin, Austin is Sodom, if that's okay with you. That's Sodom, all right? <laughs> Lot has pitched his tent just off of 6th Street, okay? Abraham has settled in East Texas. Yes. Now, these five kings think they're getting away with it. But the big king they got to pay this, all this money to is up in Washington, D.C. His name is Joe Biden. And so what Biden does after a year, he gets tired of this. So the United States recruits England and Canada and Mexico, and those four countries come down, and the Bible says it uses this word, they smote those five kings in their cities. They smote them. That means they wipe them out. They take their people, they take their treasure, and they start heading north. And really, it's true, they really do go north. And they head through Waco. They take Waco. They get to Abilene. And when they get to Abilene, Abraham decides to get involved. By the way, this is the first war that's recorded in the Bible. Abraham decides to get involved. Abraham gets 318 of his men. They travel to Abilene. And in the middle of the night, they go in and they are victorious in taking the camp. They get all of the people of Sodom and all the treasures of Sodom. And especially, why does he come? Because he cares about Lot. He doesn't care about those kings. He cares about Lot. And he gets Lot and his family, and he brings them, and they're traveling back to East Texas. And then they meet this really unique biblical character. And that's where we're going to pick up the story. His name is Melchizedek. Then Melchizedek king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And look what he does. He was priest of God most high. And he blessed Abram. Blessed be Abram by God most high, he said. And praise be to God most high who delivered your enemies into your hands. Abraham does something really unique right now. He's going to take a tenth of those spoils, and he's going to give it to God through Melchizedek. He's going to tithe. Now, when he does that, the king of Sodom is going to come to Abraham, the king of Sodom. He said, hey, let's make a deal. Here's the deal. You keep the rest of the spoils. You keep all of our spoils. I just want my people back. I just want my people back. The question is, what is Abraham going to do with that? Well, let's look together. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. What Abraham tells Sodom is this. You had nothing to do with my victory. I don't want anyone, anywhere to think you did. Everything I had, everything that happened is because of El Elyon, the God most high. This morning what we're going to do is I'm going to give you four really powerful principles. At least they were powerful for me in my life about this story. So open up your bulletin. There should be a pen in front of you. And I'm going to give you four points that I want to share with you this morning about this God that we love and worship, El Elyon, the God Most High. Number one is this. El Elyon owns everything under him. El Elyon owns everything under him. Everything. So here's the question you have to ask yourself this morning. 
If that's true, why do I have to make alliances with the world? And that's a good question. Why would you ever give in on what you know is right to get what you want if your God owns everything? One of the richest men who ever lived, Baron Rothschild, was said that when he was driving one time, riding in a carriage, when he got out of the carriage, the coachman got down, and Rothschild, Baron Rothschild, gave him a tip. And this is what the man told Rothschild. Oh, your son usually gives me a lot bigger tip than that. And Baron Rothschild said, well, he can afford to. He's got a rich daddy. You see, when your daddy owns everything, it ought to change your perspective about everything. El, on, El, Elion, El Elion is to be praised as the God most high. He owns everything under him. Abraham said, I don't need to make an alliance with you. You had nothing to do with my victory. I'm going to honor El Elyon, for he alone is the reason for my victory. And the way he did that, he gave a tenth of that to God. He tithed to God. By tithing, what he was doing in his worship, he was saying, El Elyon owns everything. Let's look in Deuteronomy 10, 14. The Lord your God belongs the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. You see, this story is not about you and me giving a tenth of our stuff to God. It's not about that at all. This story is about you and I acknowledging that God is Lord of ten tenths. He's the Lord of everything. One preacher said this, When we do tithe, we are standing against the boast that man is the source of his wealth. So when Abraham tithed, he was acknowledging the lordship of El Elyon. Do you live that way? Do you live like God has ten-tenths of everything, you, all the things you think you own. Does God have it all? Do you live that way? Point number two, when we come to El Elyon, we understand he rules everything under him. This story is about God's sovereignty. God is sovereign over the nations of men. Napoleon, at the height of his power, was asked this question. Napoleon, whose side is God on? And this is what Napoleon said at the height of his power. God is on the side of those with the most artillery. But that was before Waterloo. That was before he was exiled to St. Helena. And while he was at the end of his life, he quoted Thomas the Kempis, Napoleon did, and said this. Man proposes, but God disposes. God will humble us, and hopefully so. If we ever think that we're in charge... El Elyon will not share his glory with anyone. I don't think you and I in here would argue theologically that God rules everything. But do we live that way? Thirdly, El Elyon reigns over our enemies. This is a unique point, but it's right in the Bible. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever asked El Elyon to deal with your enemies. Well, I'm going to tell you something. People in the Bible did that all the time. In Psalm 83, the writer is pouring out his heart because he's being oppressed by evil people. And when he gets to the very end of this psalm, look what he says in Psalm 83. May they ever be ashamed, Lord, and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. 
Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. Have you ever prayed that way? Have you ever prayed, God, deal with my enemies? Now, sometimes when you pray that because of the sovereignty of God, you may not get the answer you want. Remember a few weeks ago, if you were here, maybe two months ago, we talked about when Paul was in Philippi, he's just preaching the gospel. He gets arrested. He gets beaten severely. He gets put in inner cell in stocks. You know he had to be praying. What's that about? Let me tell you what it's about. It's about the sovereignty of God. Because it was in that jail that a jailer heard his singing. It was in that cell that a jailer saw the power of God, and a jailer submitted his life to Christ, his family submitted their life to Christ, and a church was born in Philippi. And that church would launch the church for Europe, and thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people would come to Christ because Paul's mistreatment in that prison. But even if you feel like you're being mistreated and your prayers are not being answered the way you want them, know this, El Elyon is over your situation. He is over them. I love this from Psalm 91. Psalm 91 talks about God's protection. And I want to set it up by telling you a true story. Frederick Nolan was a believer in North Africa. And he was trying to share the word of God with pagans there. And a group didn't like that, and they were chasing him. They were going to kill him. And Nolan said he came to this mountainside, and he hid in a cave. And he could hear the guys all the way around him trying to find him. And all of a sudden he looked, and a spider began to make a web over the cave hole. And when the pagans came by, there was a spider web there, and they deducted no one could be inside that cave because there's a spider web that's unbroken. And when he wrote his book, this is what Frederick Nolan said. This is great. With God, even a spider web is a mighty wall. Mm. And without God, even a wall is a spider web. Psalm 91 says this. If I say, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most your dwelling place, your tent, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Four, ready for this? He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. If I was teaching a class right now, people would raise their hands. They'd say, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> he hadn't protected me. You, there's many times I've been hurt by my enemies, and I've prayed. There's two ways to approach this question. One is this. It's the worldview that might say this. Why has the little bit of evil that has been in my life, been allowed to be there. But a believer would say this. Why has God kept so much of the evil I deserve away from me? Oh. <laughs> you know what I believe? I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to discover how many times the angels were protecting us we didn't even know it. That El Elyon was there for us. And now we come to point number four, and it's maybe the most powerful. El Elyon reigns over our circumstances. This is a tough text I'm about to read to you. It's from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 38. Let's look at it together. Lamentations 3, verse 38. Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamities and good things come? Israel, church, did not believe in bad luck and good luck. What they believed was that nothing happened apart from God's knowledge and His permission. That did not mean for them that God brought the trial. What that meant for them was that God reigned 
over the trial. God is over our difficult circumstances. This is why we can claim 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. In everything, Paul says, give thanks. We do not have to give thanks for the difficulty. We give thanks inside the difficulty. What's happening is El Elyon is accomplishing his purposes through our lives, and we trust him. That's the, that's the decision this week. Will you trust God all week? When Michelangelo in the 1500s was working on St. Peter's Cathedral, the men that were working with him, they just didn't get it. I mean, they were looking at that. They just didn't get what he was doing. And they started talking behind his back. Eventually, they got bold enough to confront him with his face. They said, hey, we don't get what this is going on. What's happening here? And Michelangelo said this. I really like how he explains to them what's going on. Even if I were to make my plans and ideas clear to you, which I am not, I still must ask you to help me. And then he said this. When the work is complete, the conception will be better understood. I don't know what God's doing in your life right now, but it may be really painful. What God calls for you and I to do is to call upon El Elyon and trust him. Can I have an amen on that? We, we've just got to trust him in our difficulties and our struggles and our circumstances and just believe that. And guys, sometimes that is so hard. But can you cry this cry from 50, Psalm 57 too? I cry out to the God most high. Can you really cry this out and believe it? Who fulfills his purposes for me. It's easy to talk about this. But can we really live it out? It was his 14th birthday. It was August the 1st, and I close with this. 1984. What a birthday present. This teenage boy, athletic, everything going his way, was taken to the doctor and was told he had cancer. The very next day, they would do surgery. They would do a second surgery a month later. And for the next 18 months, this boy went through chemotherapy. Then on January 10th of 1986, he and his dad, shoulder, shoulder, arm over arm, walked into MD Anderson Hospital. When he walked out with his boy, his boy was on crutches because his leg had been amputated. That boy would go on and he would graduate from high school. He would go to Austin College. And then he would take the most painful experience in his life and he would re-enter it by going to medical school and doing his residency. Church, listen to this. Doing his residency in the very unit where his leg was amputated. Because he believed in El Elyon. He believed that all the things he'd been through, God's got a purpose here. i, I got to help kids. I've got to serve kids. And that's what Dr. Todd Connor is doing today. Many of you in this room have been blessed because he believes in El Elyon. And every time I had a Dare Dream camp, here he is at my camp. He would stand up and he would tell the story to the kids. And he would tell it with joy, with joy. Because he would tell the kids, this is why I'm here on this earth. Wow. As we close out today, 
What's going on in your life? Where do you need to call on God most high? Maybe it is a health issue. Maybe it's a marital situation. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's a relationship situation with someone else. God is over your circumstances. God will defeat your enemies. God, El Elyon, calls for you to worship him. We're going to have some prayer folks come down here in just a minute. They're going to be at every station. We believe in the power of prayer. If you're struggling with anything this morning, give it to El Elyon. And leave with that weight lifted off of your shoulders. Let's all stand together right now. And as we sing this song, we invite you to come if you need to for any situation at all in your life. Please come.